All right, welcome back to Round Tower Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris Fisher. Next to me here, our 1964 Triumph TR4. Time to get back at her. It's been uh, since probably December time frame since I've done any real appreciable work. Unfortunately, an unheated uh, workspace kind of kind of uh, doesn't lend itself to getting any work done, but it's finally warm enough down here to paint. So I'll be able to paint underneath new metal, get some patches put in, continue on replacing the driver's side floor. Coming off a very successful uh, British overall British car show last week, Dorothy was uh, showed up and uh, I was lucky enough to take home best in class. So that was uh, very gratifying for all the work that I did, you know, four or five years of the restoration there. So it was, it was a great day, obviously, and uh, capped off with a, with a nice little uh, beer mug trophy. So that was always nice to put that to use uh, as soon as I could. So anyway, stick around, see what we can get done today. Thanks for watching. Here's my uh, Southern Polyurethanes Epoxy Primer and Activator. Now this is uh, left over from my restoration of the Spitfire, but the trick with this stuff is, is you, as long as you keep it sealed, it'll work. And I mean sealed from, from the manufacturer, not sealed like you take extra special care. So even though these have been around, like the date on this um, Activator here is February 2020, these have never been opened. So I'm confident that they'll still work. Otherwise, if, uh, if these had been open and anything more than a year left, I would be throwing this stuff away as wasted money because you would be afraid that all of the, the solvents and everything, the activator portions and how all of the chemicals work, that stuff would have uh, evaporated or, or reacted with the oxygen and, and you know been worthless essentially. So I'd much rather use epoxy primer underneath and that weld primer stuff. I don't like that stuff. This, uh, this stuff is nearly bulletproof. But I can mix this stuff up. It lasts for like up to three, four, five days, even depending on the temperature. And it's just that 65 degrees down here, which is the minimum temperature that the manufacturer recommends for applying this stuff. I'm going to apply it with a paintbrush. That's perfectly fine. There's no problem doing that. I don't have compressed air down here yet, so I wouldn't be able to spray it anyway. But like I said, the paintbrush is going to work just fine, especially for where I'm going to be putting it, which is going to be essentially in between the, uh, the metal layers. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some of this up to a one-to-one -one ratio primer to activator Let's uh, in this little cup right here and just let it sit until I'm ready to use it. All right, I'm only going to make up a couple ounces. I don't uh, really expect to need all that much. Put the date on there so I know, so I can keep track of uh, when I use this. Very important that when you're using the primer that you... Uh, you mix it up really well. It is a very high solids epoxy, so if you don't uh, if you don't properly mix it, you're going to leave a lot of the uh, a lot of the good properties in the bottom of the can. So you need to stir stick it. A paint shaker is not adequate. You got to get a, uh, a stir stick and mix this stuff up. All right, you can see the that solids hopefully on the uh, end of the stir stick there, gooping off. So again, one to one. So I'm going to want uh, two ounces. That's pretty close. Try not to reuse my mixing materials at all if I can help it. It's just stuff's not expensive. Get those mixing cups for, I don't know, a couple bucks from Amazon probably for like a hundred of them. All right. That's all there is to that. Let that, uh, it should induce for 30 minutes. You can go as long as you want, really, up to, I mean, if they, uh, they sometimes recommend several hours if you're trying to do UV protection. I'm going to let it induce until I'm ready to use it, so we'll set this aside and move on. So I do have the original piece that I cut out here, and my replacement piece kind of clamp these two together, and I've got to uh, trim, trim this flange a little bit, but everything else looks pretty good. It's not perfect. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there, like right in here. Um, but it's going to be good enough. I'll be able to kind of finagle this to, to make it work, I think. Get this cleaned up, get it sized up, get it fitted a bunch of times. i got to go over there and get that prepped over there on the other side and get it ready for paint. And we'll go ahead, but we're going to do this metal first to get this trimmed up and then go from there. This green stuff here, this is Osfo. It's uh, essentially a rust inhibitor slash surface prep for, for painting. It converts all this rust into phosphorus oxide or something like that. And uh, I used this before on the car. Just showing it to you again. So I'm going to coat all these surfaces. The uh, This is the only rust converter that 
Southern Polyurethane is the place where I get my paint, where the, what they recommend. There's obviously others out there, but this is, uh, this is the only stuff they recommend. Works pretty well, you just gotta neutralize it properly. So what I'm gonna do is it goes on very, very thin. It's like water. Apply it to the surfaces that I'm getting ready to weld to and let it, uh, let it kind of set up. And then it can dry with no problem. And then I'm gonna come back around, re-wet it to get it back off because you can't let it, if you just dry it and don't get it off of here, use a lot of water and you don't get it off of here, your, your epoxy primer will never, never stick. So you got to get it on, let it do its thing, and then you got to get it off. But it doesn't take much at all. Like I said, it's very, very thin. All right, so let that do its job. Let it sit there for about 30 minutes or so, I think is what it says. While I'm waiting for that OSFO, I'm going to uh, take the rear drum brake off. I just want to take a look. I, uh, I mean, a drum brake's a drum brake, really, but you know, I've got the, uh, I am lucky enough to have the car with wire wheels from the factory, so I've got the, uh, the spindle there that needs to come off, and then this drum should come right off after that. And we'll uh, look inside just to, like I said, just take a look, see what's in there. Alright, these things are like little mini lug nuts, you can kind of see that they're tapered at the, uh, the ends there, so obviously don't want to lose these. All right, that comes right off. Nothing much to that. And then it looks like these got these two little screws in there, and ten bucks says they're not going to come out easy. Never seen to. Well, that one did. Seems like no matter what drum brakes I have ever worked on, these screws just don't like to come out. Yep, got them both. Believe it or not. Yeah. So obviously they're a little. Uh, Gummed up inside. Actually, it's in pretty good shape, though. Definitely had some leaks. Yeah, you can see the fluid down here. So something's been leaking. Hopefully, it's brake fluid and not something else. But shoes are in good shape. Obviously, they're going to be replaced because you know why wouldn't you? But everything looks uh, looks like a standard Triumph brake. You got the adjuster up here and the the uh, slave down there. So roly poly in there, a couple of them. Pill bugs. All right, well that wasn't very exciting. So if you see the OSFO on there, you can see it's almost toned like a chalky white, especially you can see it there. And that's that's what it's supposed to be doing is that that chalkiness is, is the conversion process, I guess, and it's, it's expected. So what I'm gonna do now is wet it again and then get a whole bunch of fresh water and just start uh, getting it get it wet with the osso to kind of reactivate it so that I can get it off because it's done its job now and then get a whole bunch of water and rinse it off with a whole bunch of water so that it's nice and clean and then uh, start letting it dry you do kind of have to worry about flash rust so I'm going to get my heat gun out and just kind of help it along a little bit and then I should be ready to get some uh, get some epoxy primer on there alright so that should really be all there is to it I just got to let it dry like I said, I'll get the heat gun here and help it along. So I got this area prepped, cleaned up, wax and grease remover, all that kind of good stuff on it. I am um, ready to put some paint down. I've got to get the uh, replacement piece, scuff up the edges of that so I can paint the other side of that. So the recommendation for, uh, for that is just 60 grit. So I'll take some 60 grit to this, get this all cleaned up so I can paint uh, a good swath of that. Two coats, half, wait half an hour, put another coat on it, and that'll really be it. Not going to be able to weld tonight. I, I'm going to give it at least 24 hours, which is going to turn into, you know, two or three days, which is fine, and then I'll be able to get this in on the next visit. All right, give this paint quick little stir. Got my paintbrush here. I'll just start painting. Really all there is, so wait a half an hour, put on a second coat, and then uh, just got these little cheapo, I don't even know if they're a buck, just little chip brushes. I might leave little strands in there, I don't really care, and I don't even clean these up, I just chuck them because really the um, paint thinner seems to destroy these bristles anyway, so it's not really worth it. Two coats of epoxy primer on the body there, two coats of epoxy primer here on the 
replacement piece. Give that, uh, give that a couple days here to cure up and then we'll get going and getting this piece in. What you see right there, this is a uh, support bracket. I think this either comes up to the dash or it's part of the steering column, I don't remember. But uh, that at some point broke. So this is not supposed to be welded to this bracket, but it is. And they did a real uh, hack job on this. So you got three spot welds over here and then several, the piece kind of comes around and, and welds up to this side over here. So I, should, I can see those three spot welds really well. I'm gonna try and get those drilled out. And then I'm either going to kind of pry it off over here or do something, try to drill out something. I can't really see the spot welds. Hopefully they didn't just go to town and weld the heck out of it. All right. So we got that. So again, you just want to kind of drill just enough where you can start to break it away. So that's cool. Can't see very well on this side and I'm not gonna be able to get a camera in here to show you. So, looks like there's five or six crazy of them over here. So, we'll see what we can do. Well, I got it out. It wasn't pretty. Couldn't get, a, couldn't get anything in there. So, I drilled them out as best I could and then kind of twisted it, obviously. But it's in, uh, it's cut there. So, this might be one of those pieces where I'll just try to fabricate it. I'm sure this will be a fun little, fun little hour or so to try to bend that into a uh, reusable piece. Thankfully the bracket itself or whatever that the support line there is in good shape. So it's out. This is the piece that I just took out. You can see weld right here where this is uh, essentially all welded together. My intention here is to pound this thing flat, make a pattern out of it and see if I can recreate it. I, uh, I should be able to do that. I, th I think I'm a little concerned about all of the, the complex bends and not being able to, uh, to use all the right tools to make it, but we'll see how it goes. But first I got to get this bracket off try without destroying it it looks like they uh, they drilled through it a little bit but nothing uh, nothing too major and then go from there with flattening this out and getting some new metal and getting it back together all right able to get the bar off I just essentially cut into the weld as much as I could and then just twisted it and it broke free cleaned it up a little bit so that's uh, nothing wrong with that thing now mark that so I know what the heck it is put that aside and then the bracket itself came apart but I still have enough of a, uh, a template here that I'll be able to try to get this back together. So I'm going to cut out a piece of metal. I can still see where the creases are from everything, so that's good. Cut out a piece of metal, make, this, uh, make a template out of this thing, mark all the spots where I want to put in my creases, and see what I can do about this. So this will be, uh, be a good one. It'll be a little tricky, I think. What I've done here is just take the metal, trace out on the manila folder here, I'm going to cut this out. I'll make my bends, put it up against the car to uh, try to try to copy it and get it to fit as well as I could because of all the weld and everything in here. It's kind of hard to really get a good idea of where stuff is. The other thing to worry about is obviously the manila paper is much thinner than the piece of metal is going to be. So you have to account for the fact that you're going to suck some space up as you bend it and the thickness and everything. So it's got to be just a little bit bigger than what you're actually tracing out. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, mimic that a little bit. Got that cut out. Now we're gonna go ahead and bend it up the way that I think it's supposed to be bent. Mark it, uh, mark it on there so I don't lose track of where stuff is. All right, dotted lines, all that good stuff in here. So now I'll bend this up, take it over to the car and uh, get it together here. Got the piece of metal cut out and got the template traced onto there. So now I'll go ahead and trim that out along the black line. And the, uh, Again, it's going to get a little bit bigger as we go along. I'll put the holes on it in it while it's still flat. I don't want to put holes in it when it's already bent because it'll be too much of a pain in the rear. So just going to get this hunk of metal in the, in the grinder here or in the vise and, and just start cutting around and making everything fit and giving it its shape. So I'm starting to bend this. I'm not, uh, I'm not real crazy with how this is coming out but it should probably do okay the um i just don't know if it's going to fit obviously so i'm trying to uh go back and forth to the car try and do the fit up and everything to make sure that it's it's coming along but it's just uh not real crazy about how how it's going but we'll keep playing now unfortunately it's uh it didn't work out real well and I think this piece was so mangled and destroyed that I didn't get a clear picture of what came off and then I flattened it out 
too soon. I should have studied it a little bit more to make my template, and now I can't get this to fit up. So I kind of cut this away, and I could I could force it to fit and make it fit, but I'm going to reach out and. If anybody's got pictures or, or knows some dimensions of this thing or, or whatever, I'd appreciate that. But otherwise, I'm gonna see if I can find some more stuff, go back through my videos. Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures. I've been I've been bad at remembering to take pictures and everything. So I, uh, you know, lesson learned there as always. But now we've got uh, the epoxy primer dry over here. I'm gonna go ahead and get prepped in to get this piece in, get it fit up, get it lined up and uh, start drawing the, uh, paint away so I can remove the paint so I can weld without splattering and sputtering and everything but that's going to go in here in just a jiff. Got the piece in place here now I've got to go through and get the excess paint off a little bit and then the holes get the paint out of there and all you do for that is you get a drill bit if it'll focus for you. Come on. Anyway you get a drill bit and you square off the top flatten it out like an old bit or something like that and what that allows you to do is kind of get in there and flat and scrape out <laughs> scrape out the paint now this is epoxy so this stuff is going to you know be a little bulletproof but... kind of see it coming off there doesn't need to be perfect by any means but you do want to get it cleaned up pretty well Get it blown out there, make sure you're not leaving any stuff in there. So I'm gonna do two spot welds here. I'll do this one down here because it's close, and then I'll get a, a one or two across the seam here. I gotta kind of flex the metal a little bit, but not too bad. Fits pretty well, I'm happy with it. The, um, I might have gotten some flex out towards me a little bit, but I, I'm not concerned with that because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to fix that as I put the floor in and all that kind of stuff. I um, chose not to put the door up for placement because I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, but I definitely will put the, the door in before I weld any, uh, any floor pieces in. So I'll go ahead here and uh, get warmed up, make sure my stuff is all set up here. It's been a while since I've welded. I'm out of practice. All right, got the welder set up. Uh, voltage of two, wire speed about 45. The table calls for two and 50. Well, it looks like I got the welder set up pretty good as far as the uh, quality goes. Seems alright. That one wasn't very pretty. better all right well, unfortunately I need to get essentially right in front of you to, to be able to weld this seam up here so I'm gonna have to reposition and I probably won't be able to get any good shots in it but this side's done I gotta get this side now I got some it's uh, moving away a little bit up here I got to figure out sheet metal screw or something to screw that in tight um, it's probably what I'm gonna do there and then we'll get that top seam and, and that'll be it not a whole lot to it going to make your way around stitch weld and I'm not I'm trying not to be too aggressive in any one spot because I don't want the metal or the heat to get too hot that the metal starts to expand what will happen is the uh, the gap will get shrink will shrink more and more as the heat gets into the metal and stretches that's why I'm coming around and trying to planish these welds a little bit I'm not I'm not real heavy on the planishing thing but uh, I'm hoping that that's going to alleviate some of my problems I had, a, I had a big problem in the boot floor on my Spitfire with that so I'm trying to alleviate that here. I don't know if you caught that, but that was definitely my nice, my nicest string of welds. The problem is the gap is too big in spots, too small in others. Just, you know, I don't really set myself up that great, but 
a little bit of a hack job, but it gets done. All right, well, that's not too bad. Fortunately, I can get to it, this uh, this bead from the other side, and I think I'm gonna do that, but, uh, but not now. So I'm just gonna kind of leave this rough a little bit, get it cleaned up as, uh, as good as it is and, and call it. But uh, yeah, that, that's the first, I guess, major patch. This one up here, which is just off camera, was a little bit of a patch, but not, uh, not like this thing was. When did I start this? December time frame, I think, <laughs> if not before that. So nice to, uh, nice to get some structure back in. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Well, the, uh, that, that was one of the major patches that I wanted to get in. There might be one or two more that I want to get in before I really try to get the floor in. There's going to be some spots because the frame is there that I'm not going to be able to weld the floor in, but I want to get it, you know, on each sides and in the corners and everything to try to give it a, a pretty good structural stability for eventually taking the body off and, and going to town on everything else. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get the floor in here and keep moving towards that goal. So thanks again. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.